Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this podcast, our Good News Bay podcast, where we are seeking to make Bay County brighter one conversation at a time. And with each guest, we have a brand new conversation, a fun conversation. Um, Many of them are faith-filled conversations. This will be another one of those, uh, along with some incredible content and some good news happenings around the community. Today's guest with us is Denise Kelly. She is the Deputy Superintendent of Teaching and Learning for Bay District Schools, which I'm pretty sure means that you are kind of the number two role and and you serve all well you're answering lots of questions and trying to provide information and keeps things organized and know a little bit about a whole lot of things and a lot about a whole lot of things and are trying to keep up with a bunch of changes sure a um, little bit of biography about our friend Denise uh, she is born and raised in Bay County graduated from Bay High School go Bay can we say that That's go right. tornadoes um, uh, it sounds weird coming from a, a dolphin um, <laughs> Florida State grad with a bachelor's in education and a master's in education leadership. Uh, Want to talk about your husband, Mark, for a moment? Sure. Captain Mark? Let's talk about Captain Mark. All right. A.K.A. Moses. <laughs> yeah, right. Funny things you learn when you do these interviews. <laughs> um, I knew he was a boat captain. I knew I'd see pictures on Facebook of, uh, uh, is it Lady Kelly? Lady Kelly. Yeah, um, he runs the Lady Kelly. All right. And y'all have got two boats yeah. with and the charter, mm-hmm. charter business? Lady Kelly and the Kelly Girl. All right. And it sounds like business is good and that there's lots of people wanting to snapper fish. Lots of people fishing, lots of people wanting to fish. We have been very blessed this season. Sweet. Um, and so uh, we're going to have a link in the comment section. I think it's the comments that uh, you can go to if you want to see where and how and see mm-hmm. pictures of some big fish. I also know uh, that in addition to your husband, Mark, you have a daughter, Carly. Yeah. Uh, who is now grown. She's yes. an adult. She's married. She loves the Lord. She does. They um, all do. Yeah, and you've got a granddaughter, uh, Lydia. Uh, how old is Lydia? Lydia is two. She's my angel. She is precious, <laughs> and uh, they save grandbabies change things. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I've got a lot of friends these days. It seems like they're starting to get to that phase yeah. where the kids are growing, starting to get married and have grandbabies, and I think it does change things. It does. Nothing. Uh, I Really, nothing compares to it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we had to talk about Lydia first, but you also have a son-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, Garrison. I do. Stand-up fella. He is. Uh, he's a man's man. Can I say that? Is that, yeah. is that okay? Um, and and so he also loves to fish. Yeah. He also has a boat. He does. And a charter uh, company. Mm-hmm. And he does a lot of inshore fishing. He inshore. does inshore fishing. Mm-hmm. And what's the name of that? He he runs The Real Rosie. All right. Uh, and so he has, there'll also be a link there for that. And then you have a son. I do. Carson. Carson. Who I met. He's 20. He is 20. Is he at Florida State? He's a Florida State student full time. He's home for the summer, but taking classes online too. And he's running a boat of his own. He's running a boat. And so we are a fishing family and education family. <laughs> well, that is, that is a good thing. I love fishing. I love I fishermen. I talk about it too much probably, but Jesus loved to fish. Many the fish. I say love to fish. He cooked fish. You know, he cooked fish for the disciples, but when he did fish, he caught big ones and he caught lots of them. I read about it in the text. So you're um, trying to be like him in more ways than just, you know. I am. I kind of I like the book. Yes, absolutely. Um, so that, all that's cool. So, so that's a lot of family background. Sure. I want to get into some personal stuff because this is part of your story. Mm-hmm. Um, and just from the outset, I'm going to tell folks that they can go to an interview you did with Channel 13. Mm-hmm. Um, and Miss Ho- Annie Hoyt, um, m- recently relative yeah. to Buddy Check, yep. uh, and breast cancer. That's part of that story, but that story didn't start with uh, finding breast cancer. It actually started uh, when you were well. It started long before you were twenty nine, but you were a teacher, mm-hmm. twenty nine. Um, you were in a car accident. I was, and it literally was a drunk driving accident. Yes, um, she. I was coming home from a teachers conference. Um, at night, at nine o'clock at night, on Twenty Third Street, at the foot, at the baseball fields, right there, that curve, and I saw her coming around the curve. Now we talking about Rep Borland. What? Twenty Third Street. Twenty Third Street, um, right there at the baseball fields. Close to the college. Gulf Coast. Yes. Yes. Yes, at Gulf Coast. They used to call that Rep Borland. Um, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, they did, and we'd <laughs> we'd hit we'd hit baseballs over the screen and into the street. And okay. See them bounce like golf balls. Well, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that was the right spot. <laughs> So the baseball didn't hit me. A car hit a me. A car hit you. Did <laughs> yeah. it go come from the other side? Yeah. So I was going around the curve and I saw a car coming toward me and I noticed that she was in my lane. I was driving in the inside lane. I was the lead car and she was in my lane and I thought, 
is this car in my lane? And you, know, you have seconds. And so literally going through my mind, I'm thinking, I can't stop. I can't put on brakes because there's people behind me. I can't swerve to the outside lane because there's a person there. And if I swerve and miss and go into the trees, if you hit a pine tree, you die. I mean, this is all going through my mind. So I literally hung on and I said, Jesus, I hope I'm alive when this is over. And um, <clears throat> she hit me there, um, anticipated or they projected she was going 70 and I'd slowed down to oh, 40. My. And she had hit me on my side. Um, and so I was driving a Honda Accord, little Honda Accord, no airbags at the time in 97. And that little car did its job with the seatbelt. And um, I never was never knocked out. Um, but I remember I um, spun around. I remember when I stopped, um, my knees hurt, my head hurt, my arm was broken. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm alive. <laughs> And literally um, thinking, I survived this. Now I have to get out of this car. It's crazy. But I couldn't. I had broken broken um, patella. Um, my arm was broken. I had a head injury. Um, I also had all my ribs were broken. And so they literally took me to the hospital. And um, I ended up in the hospital for seven days, three surgeries. Um, the vertigo was so severe from the head injury that I couldn't sit up. I literally had family take care of me for six months and I was in leg cast from hip to ankle for eight weeks. Um, and literally I had to have help getting around. Carly was three at the time. Thank the Lord she was not with me, um, at the time. And, um, so, you know, there's just, there's so many things that happened during that time with the fact that I had the accident, I was in the hospital, um, the lady that hit me ended up going to prison for seven mm. years. Yeah, in fact, they weren't sure she was going to make it through the night just because she was so drunk. She was like 0.27, I okay. think was her alcohol level. They put us in the same ambulance, took us to the hospital together. Um, and so, you know, when my pastor got there, I'm like... Could you go check on her? Like, she's, I mean, she's, they said she may not make it through the night. And I'm like, she needs Jesus if she doesn't have Jesus, yeah. if she can accept Jesus, if she, and so um, she survived. Um, I ended up getting a letter from her, you know, once she served her time. And um, so went was going through leg cast and everything. Um, Carly was three. Mark was playing base, baseball at the time. Um, when I was laying on the couch, Mark was playing baseball. Football. No, softball. Mark was playing softball at the time at night. Okay. When I found a lot I didn't know. I, I knew he fished. I didn't know he did anything. Yeah, he played softball too. Awesome. Yeah. I'm and, sorry I'm interrupting. <laughs> this is bad. And so, um, so he was at softball practice or a game one when um, I found the lump in my breast. Um, sitting How on long the couch. is this after the accident? So the accident was in January and I found this in March of the wow. same year. Had you look, you told me earlier that you had had to, to relearn how to walk. I did. Had so, you learned how to walk again by the time that they found the cancer? No, I was still in leg cast. So the thought of, um, you know, I'm in leg cast. How is this going to work? Like, I can't even get up by myself, right? No. Um, so how, so they, you know, friends, Mark, got me to the doctor. Um, actually, the, fir at the first time I went, they said, let's watch it for a, th a couple of months because it's probably a hematoma from the seatbelt. So we watched it and um, it didn't go away. So by the time I went back to the doctor, the leg casts were off, but um, the leg cast has stayed on for so long and the patella um, the scar tissue had attached itself to the bone and to the underneath of the patella. So learning how to walk again meant um, breaking the scar tissue so that my knees would bend. Like That hurts. Oh, goodness, does it hurt. <laughs> it's probably worse than child labor. <laughs> and so I was going to therapy every day, you know, try to learn to walk. And so when we went back to the doctor and he said, Let's just take it out. We won't have to worry about it. And I remember um, him taking it out, him coming into the recovery room, and he said, Denise, you have breast cancer. And I was 29. And so, and I had a three-year-old. <laughs> and um, at that time, it was very, very rare for them to find cancer at that young, in that age of young person. I had no history of breast cancer. Way more proactive now, aren't they? Yes. And so... Um, so I remember, and this this is a, this is an important part I think of who I am. Um, I remember we went, we came back home, and Mark and I, you know, believers, we sat on the couch and we just cried for probably two hours, and then I got mad, 
<laughs> um, Hang on. Is it okay for Christians to cry and is it okay for them to get mad? Yeah, I think it is because we, I mean, I would, we were broken hearted. Those are human emotions. Yeah. It is okay. I want people to hear that and know that. That's real life. Yeah. And so, and, and I remember, um, he helped me get up cause I still couldn't get off the couch and I said, help me up. So I got up and I was just kind of walking back and forth. Um, Carly wasn't there at the time and, and, and I said out loud, I mean, I'm like, um, God, I don't understand. And I remember where I was and he, and I said, I started listing. I'm like, I'm a good person. <laughs> there are bad people in this world. And I literally started listing. I have sang in the choir. I've taught children's church. I've led the Christmas <laughs> musicals. I have played the piano at church. I'm in church every Sunday and Wednesday night. Like, why is this happening to me? And it was an audible voice that wasn't audible yeah. said, um, I owe you nothing except what I've already given you. You cannot earn my love, my respect, my healing, my salvation because of your works. And it was at that point True. that I realized that everything that I've been doing for Jesus was for his love and his protection and not because I loved him. And that's when my entire life changed. So you were doing things to show God that you loved him or so that he would love you, not because he loved you. He loved you. you. Yes. And so, you know, that was the reason why I went to church every Sunday. Because I, I mean I did love Jesus. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I love Jesus, but oh, I, I didn't I didn't realize I did I went to church and I sang because Maybe this won't, maybe things won't happen to me. But literally, you know, the Bible, it says those things that I fear come upon me. Like my two fears in life were a car accident and cancer. Mm. And I had both of them in the same year. So it was at that point in my life that I had to make a decision. I either trust God or I don't trust God. Either he is Lord of my life or he is not Lord of my life. Um, and that was, you know, people, I tell people now, I'm like, all he has to do is just tell me <laughs> because I'm listening now, you know, before I thought I was listening, but I wasn't listening. And he had to, I truly believe everybody hits their rock bottom. And I was always a good person. I mean, my daddy taught me how to be a good person in my eyes, in his eyes, in the world's eyes. Yeah. Um, and it was at that point that. I mean, I realize that we are not good in anybody's eyes. <laughs> the Bible describes man as a heart that's desperately de yeah. wicked and deceitful. Yeah. And, and compared to Jesus, we are yeah. um, all riches. Yeah. And so, you know, it was at that point that I realized that, okay, my goals in life have shifted. And my goals aren't personal goals anymore as far as career and those kinds of things. My goals is, is to serve the Lord. So we got a lot of school stuff to talk about. This is cool because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think we're going this deep. Um, <laughs> so as I think it's important sometimes to walk through the emotions because really, as I look at your story outwardly, I look at, at I, I, I mean, you're confessing out loud what I thought would have been true, which is here's someone who has been through these really unfair things or seemingly like, why would this good thing or bad thing happen to a good person? And you chose still to believe anyway. That was a process for you. Mm -hmm. Was it a day? Was it days long? Was it months long? No, I, it wasn't because I mean, to me, it was more instantaneously because it was like a revelation that had been revealed to me okay. of the fact that um, you know I had always been able to control my life, so I thought I trusted Jesus. Yeah. Even with the car accident, it was I can get better, right? Yeah. But with breast cancer. I couldn't fix that. Is it fair to say, and it's probably not fair that he's not on the couch beside you for me to ask him, but since you've you've given me his nickname as Moses, I'm, I'm assuming that this period of time was was a big deal faith-wise in Mark's life too. I mean, y'all had to walk that together, right? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, we had days that we cried together. We had days we laughed together. We had days that we fought. Well, well and I mean, <laughs> I mean you're truly. speaking for a woman. Let me speak for a man for a second, because when you're telling me this story, I'm thinking, okay, well, um, and I and I watched the story that was done with the buddy check stuff, uh -huh. and and if I was a woman dealing with breast cancer, that would I would want to know what are all the protocols and what do you do and how do you get, how do you get everything right? But as you're talking about having a three, I mean, Carly was three. I'm uh -huh. thinking. 
oh no, I got to raise this child and take care of mama. Like mm-hmm. this is, this just, this ain't fair. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And as protector and provider, I mean, all those things, it's a, it's a different, it's a similar struggle I would imagine, but it, his realm of emotions would have been, I mean, he needed softball to have a, a distraction sure. in a way. Yeah. And I think his, um, he he may have suffered he, in a different way. He suffered more than I did because I knew what I was feeling in my body and I knew the mindset that I had. But sometimes he was guessing, "How are you doing?" Let I want I want I think this is good news. I was actually talking to a couple this week. Um, one of them is ill. They both have have had some traumatic events. Through the, this is the first time that she has seen him. And she's like, you know, it was easier when I was going through it than it is watching mm-hmm. him go through mm-hmm. it. And I think that's what you're that's sharing. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he he and I both, both grew, um, and our marriage, you know, is stronger because he did things for me he never thought he'd have to do. And You said you married young. Can I point that out? Yeah. How old were you when you got married? So um, I was 19 and 11 months when I got married. <laughs> Sweet. Almost twenty. <laughs> I think it's great. I was barely twenty, so I, I, I think that's. He cool. was twenty three, and I was almost twenty. It can work. <laughs> it can. You had a favorite Bible verse um, that I wanted to something that I think you said it was Matthew five thirty six. Don't be afraid, just believe. Just believe. That Is was that my something verse. you clung to? Oh my goodness! Like short, sweet. Um, I mean. The Lord said it, do not fear, only believe. And it's very easy for me to say and for me to quote. But, you know, anytime something comes up in my life that might be somewhat scary, I have to say it over and over and over again. And walking by faith is a daily struggle. I think that's true for everybody. (laughs) It is a daily struggle. It's a daily grind. It's a daily trusting it to God Mm -hmm. when you can't see and you don't understand and you have to be reminded of, okay, I got you through the last time. I got you through this time. And you're not in control. I hate that part. No, me too. Uh, we've learned that a lot with <laughs> pandemics and hurricanes and a whole bunch of other stuff. But you know what? It's I, I've decided through all of that that my day starts and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm-hmm. And um, he has given me laughter. He's given me joy. And he's given me so much to be thankful for that every day is a blessing. Well, every breath I take is from him. Well, I don't. You're absolutely right. Every breath. Because it almost ended with a car wreck. And you can appreciate it more than most of us, probably. <laughs> you know, when I look at your life now, and I know that you've got a, a amazing family, little Lydia, um, in those moments, you probably never could have looked that far into the future and thought there's still a future. This is going to be okay. In fact, there are going to be some great days. There's going to be some days of tossing my granddaughter around mm-hmm. that you talked maybe mark tosses yeah her, but, i don't toss her but but you get to play you get to play dolls and you get to make her smile and you get to go get picture mm-hmm. sessions mm-hmm. and it, i think there's probably somebody that's listening or watching that would maybe wonder is it ever going to be better they've gone through the hurricane they they, they <laughs> everything just it's like one thing after another after another but some maybe some of them have to COVID twice i mean mm-hmm. i don't know there's crazy things it would help them to know that you can trust in God and there is hope and this is not how it's always going to be yeah. necessarily. It's a season. It's a season. I mean, we walk through seasons all the time. The seasons change every year. Okay, so now I'm going to fast forward and I'm going to change gears fast, all right? Yeah. So Denise Kelly, a uh, school teacher at 29, went through these traumatic events. You were a kindergarten teacher. Um, during a lot of this period, I'm going to kind of review some of it sure. quickly, but during some of this time, you were a resource person at... Uh, I think Cherry Street, uh-huh. uh, Title One School, maybe mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you did, I guess you taught for a number of years after that. I did. S- okay. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually became a principal. Assistant principal and then a principal. Were you at Springfield at one time? No. I had that wrong in my head somewhere. Yeah, I was um, a prin- assistant principal at Beach Elementary and then became principal at Beach Elementary. All right. And we did talk about the fact my mom was a PE teacher way I back know, then. I know. I love um, your mom. Well, she... <laughs> Can't was, believe I'm that old. <laughs> I, <laughs> I no, you, you, mom was, was not... Mom... I hope my mom Your mom was young forever. Was, yeah, well, she, she taught PE forever. <laughs> she did. She's she's uh, she loved getting down on the floor with, with my kids, and I loved it. She's a she's a teacher at heart. But um, then you got a chance to help open as principal um, Breakfast Point, right? Yes. Which everybody on that beach knows that school's done phenomenally well. 
one of our staffers, um, our children's minister um, at that time was uh, starting as a teacher, third grade teacher okay. under your leadership. I asked her this afternoon, I tried to do my research. I said, hey, tell me something about um, Denise Kelly. She said, well, she loves Jesus. And I said, well, that's good. She said, well, she's awesome. She said she was, you were very supportive of teachers um, and you were uh, just, just a, a, you're a great leader. So um, she thinks the world of you. Well, thank you. I do appreciate it. Tell me, well, I know we got one brand new one opening. Mm -hmm. I, got, I know that there's talks of some and I know that there'll be some more that are going to open in a, in, a, in a couple years. For instance, um, well, let me back up. Um, Gary Walsingham Elementary. Did I say that right? Academy. Academy. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the new elementary school on the beach. It sure is. Is that going to be a few students? So right now, right, right now it's going to be a few students because we have built that school, which is what we're working on in other, in future developments. We built that school knowing that that community is growing. Like there are home developments and home plats are selling houses out there as fast as they can put the sign up. Where's, where is out there? I mean, I know it's on the other side of the bridge, yeah. but there's... So um, it's where the new sports complex is on Panama right. City Beach. There's apartments everywhere. Out yes, there. and it's right across the street from that. Okay. So it will have it will um, have students in it from the Woodlawn neighborhood, yep. an older neighborhood, um, partially down between Middle and Front Beach Road. Yep. No, middle and Back Beach Road, and then it's going to include the new phases of Breakfast Point Academy. Okay. So it's going to be a neighborhood school. Um, right now they're opening as a K-2 school. That we're going to house all of our um, beach pre-K classes there because they have space right now. Okay. Um, but then next year it'll add, they'll add their third grade and they'll continue on until eventually it'll be a K-8 school. Okay. So mm -hmm. it'll start as a K-2, eventually be a K-8. Mm -hmm. um, another school that the, their plans to reopen is Oscar Patterson. That's correct. And it will also start as a K-2, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes. Um, um, the superintendent has taken to the board on a pro proposal to open Oscar Patterson in August of 22. Okay. 2022. Um, we're in the planning phase. Sounds so right weird now. to hear that. But I know. We're, I mean, we're kind yeah. of in the summer of 2021, yes. so you got to be planning. Yes. So we are working on... Um, renovations, updating the building, preparing that school for reopening, um, having the, trying to get the community more involved and the parents involved in the school. Um, we're going to be choosing a principal for that school in the fall um, and along with the school advisory councils and just um, working to open that school and provide that community with a neighborhood school. So you've been listening to the community. They want a community school. You're counting on the community to help make it happen sure i mean yeah. it takes the it takes all of us to make everything right. successful come in 2022 yes come in right. 2022 there's a ton of construction going on yes uh, a lot of it is hurricane construction mm -hmm. um taking a lot of planning to get to that place i know that this one of the highlights we've mentioned before is the new gymnasium over at jinx and how nice it is mm -hmm. um one of the notes that you had given us, they're in the process of doing some things at Moet. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like a new band room, new cafeteria, these kind of things. Oddly enough, it's the same stuff that I, I'm a Moet guy, right? So uh, all the way back when I was in Mustang land, wow. um, the, that, that stuff needs to be replaced. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to the principal over there, Ed Sheffield, a uh, junior earlier today, and he's excited about some of that as well. Um, I, I'm gonna While we're talking just about some of the construction, I think it's important. Um, we all know that there's have we are having to add new schools, mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of people moving to town. I get lots of questions when I'm having these guests on. I'm asking people, "Hey, what, do you, what would you want me to ask them?" Mm -hmm. And they want to know from all of our officials, you know, what is the plan to keep up with infrastructure? Well, praise the Lord that we're we got people coming. Yes, uh, that there is growth from a financial standpoint. You never want to be that place that has to bear the weight of the burden of building it before they get here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we're always, I think, going to have to just kind of make sure that they're here so that we can pay, mm -hmm. let them help us pay for mm -hmm. what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, but in light of all that, we had a number of students that moved away after the hurricane. Sure we did. And so I know if we use, say, Moet as an example, they had over 1,100 students at that time. They've had quite a few less than that. That number is rising mm -hmm. and continues to rise. Um, but you were indicating to me that kind of the location has a lot to do with population. For instance, you mentioned Bozeman mm -hmm. as being a place that mm -hmm. their numbers are, their they're enrollments growing. going up really mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. I bet the same is the case with Gary Walsingham Academy. 
uh, in some of those areas. And so it looks like it's going to have to be a combination of planning new schools where those are needed mm -hmm. to keep up with infrastructure. And then also we actually have, I'm calling it good news because we actually have some margin in a few of the schools mm -hmm. Um, such as more that we can continue to build back population for growth to what capacity is. Mm -hmm. And and you were even saying in some of them that as you're building back areas, you may actually get more use out of those spaces. Sure. So, I mean, the construction of Gary Walsingham is a prime example of what um, the superintendent and the facilities department is doing in conjunction with the county. So that school is not going to open at capacity, but based on the plans that they have, um, that they've looked at and met with St. Joe and all the developers yes. on the beach side, right. the schools at the beach are we're, we're not we're not going to be able to hold those. And so three to five years ago, they started planning. We've got to have another school on the beach. So um, Walsingham will open not at capacity, but within a year, it's going to be more at capacity and it's probably going to be filled up because I don't know if you've driven to the beach, but the apartments are going up and the homes are just exploding. So that's the same thing around the county. Um, they're constantly meeting with government officials, um, Department of Transportation, um, all of the entities to find out where's the growth. Tyndall is bringing in lots of families. Tyndall Academy, you know, they have started their middle school at Tyndall Academy. So now they're going to have K through seventh grade this year. And so those families are coming in and those families need somewhere to live. They do. And so they're going to be on the east side of the county. And so, you know, we're actually already talking to the county, the city of Panama City, about um, where are we going to build a school out there and where's the school going to be located? And we're in planning phases right now because the families are coming. So we're, um, our district is trying to be proactive in knowing the growth in the populations instead of being reactive. Because as you know, it takes quite a number of months to build a school. You know, even in what you said, you're, you're actually trying to, I think what you're saying is good because I, I think, you don't want to put shovel and ground any sooner than you have the funds, but at the same time, you better have planned in advance how that was going to go. And I think that does that makes a lot of sense. One of the places where the planning's been involved, and it's been hard for me to kind of put my finger on it because I've been in a lot of meetings with you guys over the years trying to be supportive. And one of the places that has fascinated me is to see an intention relative to major employers in Bay County places like the Navy lab that is going to need engineers. And I've watched colleges try to work mm -hmm. that way to get engineers. Mm -hmm. We will talk about academies in a mm -hmm. minute. Um, we know that there's going to be like now we're going to have a strong need for welding. Mm -hmm. We're going to have need for certain, I mean, culinary arts. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got several really strong programs for that. And to know that there are some programs that are on like the drawing board and that's being looked at and that's being talked about behind the scenes with business people, how do we get the jobs that we need for mm -hmm. the industries that are coming? I mean, all of those are things that y'all are juggling mm -hmm. back there, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Um, and I know y'all have a person at the district that's over all this. Like Beth Patterson is her name. She's yes. extremely helpful. There'll be a link in the comments. You can ask her all this stuff um, about any of those. But let's talk about just a couple of those if we could. Okay. Like Rutherford is in the process of building a welding uh, academy. academy and a lab. Yes, um, so they are almost complete with setting up that academy with the simulators and actually the welding machines so that when students are in are at Rutherford, um, it leads directly into the Haney program okay. and um, could potentially shorten the length of that program and provide them with some skills if they wanted to obtain their certifications or license to finish that program. Um, that's just one example. We are continuously growing programs based on the needs of the community. I know that we meet regularly with um, business people. We meet with um, the, industry, the hospitality industry, construction industry. Um, they actually come to us too, right. and and they say we need these we need these skills. And so, based on their needs and their desires of the community, we actually work with Beth and with the state um, to write grants or to implement programs that are meeting the needs of our community. In fact, today I was on a call with Gulf Coast Medical Center and talking with them because they need nurses. And so um, we were trying to work out a plan of how can we get some of our students who are in the medical training track, um, 
Mosley has a great um, medical type academy that they have. Um, how can we get them and how can we get the students that are going to be entering the Allied Health program at Bay High School, how can we get them actually in the hospital um, so that they can get their feet wet, they can learn about the hospital, and then there are so many employers in Bay County that offer to pay tuition yeah. for people to continue their degree, to get their degree, and so we are constantly meeting with them, and that's why you're going to see new academies pop up. Well, employers are hungry for people that will come and work and that are qualified to do so, and I'm assuming if they can get locals that are coming through the high schools that are already trained and they can fashion them. I mean, I know I've learned from just the employ what little employment that we do that sometimes it's better to get somebody fresh that you don't have to, to, to get to work the, the rough habits mm -hmm. out or untrain mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And so if employers, as hungry as they are for that, can work with you on it, I think it's really neat. Yeah, and a lot of them have poured their own finance, finances into some of these programs yes. to make them successful because they know the funds within the school district is limited. Yep. And so they're providing additional funds and additional equipment to make it successful. One example, and, and I don't know about what you know, which fund is and all that stuff, but I know that you were talking about heavy equipment operators at Arnold High School. Mm -hmm. They've got a to me, it's just the epitome of cool. You know, I just would love to play on the playground with that little thing we did the school. <laughs> right, that's well, a You're talking home. about literally being <laughs> on the high school campus uh, or somewhere that they get to go and doing the backhoe, like legit full-size backhoe. I mean, I finally, we did some work out here with a bulldozer and they let me drive it. I mean, I don't know how I got a yeah. chance to do that. These guys get to do that in high school and then you've got a construction company, if you mm -hmm. will, that is investing. able to recruit. They're investing in the equipment and then able to recruit in employees from that. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, we have students that are actually working with the simulators, um, and it's it's literally like, you know, you would go to um, um, Funland and sit in front of a simulator or their TVs at home, and the controls are there. It's, it's like 3D, 4D. It moves them. They can feel the weight of it, and they can leave high school, Arnold High School, ready to operate the equipment and can be put to work. We used a term, or I've heard a term in, in some of the research for this about um, industry certifications. In, mm -hmm. And that seems to be a term that is relative to many of these academies. Correct. Everything from those that are engineering based, nursing based, agricultural based, mm -hmm. construction based. And when they get these certifications, whether they're going to a local uh, contractor to get a job, or a, if it's culinary arts and they've got mm -hmm. a certification, mm -hmm. now they're going to the restaurant and they mm -hmm. already know how to prepare mm -hmm. vegetables mm -hmm. and cook certain things. Mm -hmm. and do, Those are f giving them a head start, correct? Correct. It's, yes. And so um, employers are looking for those. And I think the one probably a lot of people are familiar with is like you hear people say, I have a Microsoft certification right? Because they've been through all of the training to become Microsoft certified. Yep. It's kind of this, it's the same thing, but you are certified in um, heavy equipment. You're certified in um, some, some sort of cybersecurity. You're certified in um, some digital technology. Um, so there's lots of certifications, culinary arts. Um, and so once you have those certifications, they're yours you've earned them. And so if you're out going out and you're interviewing for a job related to that field, you can walk in and say, I have this certification. Well, it makes you qualified over another person, or that may be the qualification. Right. So many of our students are, are leaving high school or Haney with these certifications and they're employable immediately, making a lot of money. I'm going to, I'm going to give you an example and I hope it's okay that I do. I, I talked earlier today in my research to Becky Peltonen, who is over the, um, agriculture, agricultural academy mm -hmm. at Bozeman at high Bozeman. school, right? She was teacher of the year. I'm bragging on her cause she's one of ours, but teacher of the year, 2019, but I'm asking her about all this stuff and I've just taken notes and notes and notes. And we talked about pruning roses and a bunch of other things cause she's really good with agricultural <laughs> right. stuff. But, she told me she had a student that had, uh, they teach them how to do a resume as a mm -hmm. part of all right. the four years in the program, um, but they get these industry certifications. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think their school leads the state in agricultural industry certifications. certifications. And so she had a student that had gone through some part of a dairy program, mm -hmm. and there was a certain term relative to that, and the employer that they were, she was seeking a job with saw that part like that she had been certified in that. And she said, that means you took a, a public speaking 
aspect to do that. I don't have no idea how it fits with a dairy mm-hmm. piece. But she said, that means you can you can uh, you can talk to customers. You're hired like on the spot at all the. She had that certification. It was all she needed. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And she told me some other stuff too that I thought was really interesting with those certifications because mm-hmm. not. Not everybody's going to go be an engineer. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, some people, this sounds hard, but some people actually have to make real life work. I mean, engineers design it. They put it, that sounds like a, a it's not a compliment, but it is uh, in the sense that, you know, you got to, you don't have to have a college degree to make a good living Correct. and not everybody's designed that way. And so whenever you, you have these academies that allow you to get into a field that can a- allow you to make a good living. Um, and we got people watching, I'm certain that are grandparents and parents who don't necessarily think their kid's going to go off and get the degree. And we have some kids that get to degrees and, and they can't, can't find, find a job. job. Correct. But all these academies are putting people in a position where they could find a job in high school, right? If they're certified in some of these things, can work locally. And some of them, and they're not year, they, you, you can't necessarily get a certification potentially in all of the areas in a year. Right. Some of them take multiple years to get them. But a lot of these industry certifications, they walk out employable and ready for the workforce. It also puts students who are going to college at an advantage because if you're going into a college, um, into a medical field, and you have certifications in some sort of health care, yep. it may be very um, competitive. And so they may look, they look at other things besides just the GPA. Um, just the S, not just the SAT score. They're looking at what have you done to show me that you're really interested in pursuing this. And if you have these things under your belt, it shows a commitment. It's it's something in addition to what the grades have sure. been, et cetera. That's good. No, that's really good. Um, but I would like to say that um, a lot of our academies um, lead to to great jobs. These certifications lead to great jobs. And Haney is is one of the best recognized schools in this area and in the state for turning out qualified, employable people. I, w- I want to actually have uh, somebody from Haney on here pretty soon to talk more about that because I think it matters. I, the, I, the CTE is, I think, the term that you use, career, career technical. technical education. And there's all these, I'm going to read them real quick because it's like construction, cybersecurity, and IT, culinary arts, digital design, digital media, early childhood, engineering, entrepreneurship, game simulation, animation, visual design, hospitality and tourism management, unmanned aircraft systems, web design. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. One of the things that I had mentioned that I thought was really cool, um, one of the things that Becky told me is that it related to the Agricultural Academy, uh-huh. it used to, let's see where it is in my notes, it used to be sows, plows, no, <laughs> cows, plows, and sows. And now within the agricultural industry, um, it is clones, phones, and drones. <laughs> And the reason she made that, you know, the largest, and maybe she's wrong, but she's teaching, she's, she's a smart lady. <laughs> the largest employer in America is the agricultural sector. So recreation, like parks, that fits mm-hmm. under agriculture. Mm-hmm. She listed off all these things. Only um, like 20% of the jobs in the agricultural area require college, college education. Degrees. But then when she began, which is, it's a lot. But then when, or not many really, but whenever you think about what they're doing now in that industry, now granted, I took a tour of her classroom a few years ago. Do you hold the goats? No. I showed up on a day that somebody had a, 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 a pig, a mama pig. Is that what they call the sound thing? Yeah. Anyway, mama pig who had stepped on her babies, right? Oh. That's not good news. No. The good news was that while we were in the classroom, there were 15 and 16 year olds doing surgery on sutures on these little baby piglets. <laughs> That's um, awesome. And at that academy, I mean, I promise you, this is cool stuff. Like, they've got a fully operational farm, um, and they're learning, like, they're learning how to, like, sustainability. Mm-hmm. Um, they're learning how to how to go pick groceries uh, when you get, like, vegetables and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. But then she gets into all the scientific stuff. And so when she starts, she said, Steve, literally, they have technology with these drones now where you can you can pick out in an entire field, you can pick out a single plant and a single bug and it will spritz. That was the word she used. It will spritz the pesticide and kill that single bug. I said, you're kidding. She said, nope. And she started talking about how it's work, how it works scientifically. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was in the rocket science side of things, but, yeah. you know, the NASA part of it. 
within the science field before mm-hmm. she went out there. Sure, she was. Um, and I know it sounds like I'm bragging dosh, but like, listen, this is Good News Bay. Yeah, it is. And we've got an academy at Bozeman High School that has gotten seven state titles and mm-hmm. a national title in the last year um, in their field. And so when you send kids down there that are in FFA, which is not cows, <laughs> plows, and sows, <laughs> but it's now phones, drones, and clones. Phones. <laughs> what is your kid getting when they go to the state title? The same thing. I'm sitting here looking at a baseball player in Alex, but you know, our state, our state um, championship Mosley team with baseball, right? Sure, yes. They got tremendous exposure as a team for being at that state tournament. And so all of those players had scouts looking at them. Mm-hmm. That's exactly the thing from what Becky was telling me that happens when you go to a, a state meet That's in true. any of these agricultural areas. And the year that we won the national ch- title, that was in relationship to like the environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's all these things that are that they're involved with that are really high tech. And I guess what I'm saying is that even if you're field in engineering, you could get national level exposure mm-hmm. and get some really lucrative mm-hmm. offers mm-hmm. from national level companies. I will say this because I'm on this kick with the agricultural. I hope it's okay. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, much of the agriculture industry today is marketing and it's sales and it's production related mm-hmm. and it's not relative to can you raise a, mm-hmm. a, a farm that has a thousand mm-hmm. head of cattle on it. And I think people take that for granted. Mm-hmm. But here locally, our educators know that, and they're training kids up in that regard. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 starting early, and you know, you talked about the drones that can spritz the yeah the weed. We got drone programs. So we have we? drone programs that students can finish and and earn their certification so, and their FFA certification and fly the drones to so, spritz. So if I'm offering good news, yeah, right, I actually did study my notes, even though we aren't going to get to talk about all of it because I'm probably over time, <laughs> way over time. They're going to cut a bunch of stuff out. But um, if I'm a parent, uh huh. And I didn't know we had all this in Bay County. I could literally call Beth Patterson mm-hmm. or go online and look at some link that we'll provide. Mm-hmm. If my child loves drones, my child loves robotics, they want to be an engineer, they want to work with heavy equipment, or uh, they like plants, or they like animal. They There's all this opportunity. And these programs, some of them start in these, these certifications that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Some of them start in middle school, right? Some of the certifications do start in middle school. And we're starting, um, we do have this program called Was Ed. Um, Steve Wozniak with the Apple Computer has developed this CTE program. It's It starts in kindergarten and it goes all the way up. But we have started that in many of our elementary schools last year. We're growing that this year, and all of our elementary schools will have the WAS Ed curriculum, and it literally is starting students in kindergarten in coding. Really? In um, computer coding. Computer coding. Simple, but computer coding. So by the time, um, <laughs> and other things, um, Legos, putting Legos together, um, asking questions, inquiry, problem solving skills. Um, programming, robot, robotics. And so those kids, as they move, we're trying to help our students in Bay County from a young age be competitive across the state and nation and the world. Well, I'm a cheerleader for our community and like all this new infrastructure. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to do the construction we're doing in a lot of these schools, but the fact that we're having to come back and make it brand new, I mean, we're going to have opportunities to have technologies we wouldn't have had otherwise. You know, the storm was horrible. But, you know, there's there's benefits and blessings in so many things. And our yep. schools are getting upgrades and new technology. Um, it, it's been painful, but... It has been. I mean, it's been painful, but it's been... The good news is right. we're getting new and better equipment and better schools. So, two things I want to hit before we close it out. One is I know that we have had some new teachers moved to Bay County. Mm-hmm. There are scads of people that are moving here for a variety of different things that we talk about in all parts of the community. If any of them have interest in teaching, uh, we still need some teachers. Um, I know we're going to have some information online about that. There's a couple of incentives, though, still happening, right? Yeah, sure. So we do need teachers. Um, the good news is that if you have a bachelor's degree or yep. a college degree and you want to teach, we can help you um, get into the field that you, the area in which you want to teach, whether it be elementary, whether it be middle, high school, science, language arts. Um, we have programs for that. So we are um, asking t- people that are interested in becoming a teacher 
to contact us and there is information that are going to be in the notes or the comments about that and um, we can help them walk them through that process and help them become a teacher um, and there are programs that they have to complete um, requirements from the state of Florida right. and it will cost them something up front but we have reimbursement that we can provide them to pay for those courses um, and and we're just asking for anyone we have a spot for you if you love children you want to change our future and you want to pour into the students of our future and you right. think teaching is your career or your next career we have people coming back that have retired in certain areas and now they want to teach um, if they want to do that we are happy to help them grow in that area well and what i'm hearing is that you're capable and qualified we can get you qualified even if you've been retired they take you back and yeah. they pay you to work with the kids yeah and we train um, you too we'll train you too that's gonna make this next one a hard sell some of you aren't looking to work um but but may just love kids and don't want to get paid oh this um, is true elevate bay is a mentoring program so maybe you do work and you have half an hour every other week minimum um we got a lot of kids that don't have a stable home environment, don't Correct. have two parent homes, and Elevate Bay is a, 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 a district. You're a mentor. I'm a mentor and love it and have been blessed by How it. How long have you been with your student? Um, he was a fifth grader at Patterson and uh, and and now is going to uh, be an eighth. No, he's going to be a ninth grader at Bay. Wow. And so he is. Uh, I believe he's finishing up and is excited about making that next jump. So it's been wonderful to get to see him make those changes from fifth grade mm -hmm. um, week by week. So mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah, I, I am a mentor with Elevate Bay and would encourage anybody to uh, to do the same. You have been an amazing guest. Thank you for letting me ask you hard questions. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that your story is an inspiration in an awful lot of folks that have met some of them that are in the middle of their storm um, that they can... Um, Rather than have fear, they can trust God and believe. So thank you so much for your time. No, thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to our podcast today. If you were encouraged by the good news, we would ask you to subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, as well as YouTube. Um, if you will subscribe, all new content will come your way. You'll get notified of it, and it'll help us to brighten Bay County. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.